your teeth. <laughs> You are now tuning in to a very exclusive interview brought to you by Tea Time with Key Productions. This interview is held with the wonderful and also talented Erica Alexander. Enjoy. Hello, it's your girl Key with Trivi, and again, I have Miss Erica Alexander with us today, and she will be telling us exactly why what brings you to Raleigh with Color Farm. Right, I'm here for Color Farm Media. That's my company, and we are keeping it colorful. Keep it colorful is an initiative to engage creators of color. Creators of color all across this country saying that their voice is needed. This is a very unique time where the narrative of long form and short um, is now at a hand and we can take control of it and um, um, produce all sorts of new things with new authors and new writers and new faces. But uh, we have to prepare for it. So we've been going around with uh, not only Color Farm Media but Seed and Spark Dot com and Black and Sexy TV, and this has been our mission. Um, bigger than myself. Well, it's just an example of what you're doing here. Um, you're creating a space for creators to make and finish very well what they have been creating in their minds. And um, from start to finish, it's sometimes a very long, bumpy road. For creators of color, it's almost non-existent to finish the things that you might have put down on paper a long time ago or just in your heads, or you might have started with partners that fell apart because of funding or lack of funding or lack of time or money or access. So, you know, I think it's important for people to know that before I was a Cousin Pam or a, a Maxine Shaw living single, um, I was just a girl in Flagstaff, Arizona. So exactly tell us how can someone yes. would like to be a part of this exactly what do they need to do well they need to go to seedandspark.com no slash colorful seedandspark.com slash colorful um, there you get all the information about the cities that we've gone to and the cities that we have left we'll be going to chicago next okay. for wakanda con okay. forever <laughs> and that'll be in the third fourth and fifth and uh, of course we're in raleigh right now and um we might go to Tennessee, but we're kind of at the end of the tour. But we need to know, we need everybody to know that anyone, anywhere can submit. You don't have to have attended the, uh, the workshops that we do. You can go online at seedandspark.com slash colorful and get the information. And there's also a, a feature um, initiative going on at the same time with the Duplass, the Duplass brothers. Okay. But that's features. We're doing series. And our goal is to get series uh, about maybe 50 of them greenlit okay. through this campaign. So we can submit series and I guess scripts or whatever the case may be, books, we can do all of that. Well, what you can do, do, you submit your project and you crowdfund for it. You greenlight yourself. Okay. You learn how through these workshops and online, how to do it better, how to reach beyond your networks, create new um, collaborations and partnerships. And then if you reach the goal of your funding and 500 followers, then that opens the door of boom, mentors that we've got from Amazon and uh, Sony TV and um, eventually perhaps um, a partnership with Tribeca to actually show your work next year. All those things, you know, back in the day they used to give writers, uh, you know, assignments and then they just stack them up. So you never saw those movies, but that's what he did. And yet we still couldn't do something with faces of color or women in them. Mm -hmm. So now we come to now with the wheel turns and here we are, and we've got a black world with Wakanda and or Black Panther, and we've got a scandal and all these other things going on. But I'm here to tell you that I was there when after 2000, they segregated television. Mm -hmm. right. And if you weren't, you know, maybe, you know, Bernie Mac or Chris Rock, you had to either be on BET TV One or right. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And um, that was after the success of Cosby Show, Will Smith, Family Matters, Living Single, Living Color, all that. They had made money. They had proven successful. You're not even talking about the Jeffersons and all those other places that were successful right next to, you know, any MASH or Archie Bunker or any of those other shows. You know, television wasn't segregated. We were all on the same, playing in the same pool. So here we are now in a world where I, you can feel there's a difference. 
uh, younger executives of all different colors, black, white, and otherwise, male and female, understand that we live in a diverse world, that it should be inclusive. But I still thought that they were still pulling from a place uh, where you either had to have representation or you know that type of thing. And I said, no, they still, they're missing all the talent that's out there. And some of the talent, not some, a lot of the talent that's out there was not ready. They weren't. Um, many of you are professionals and this is what you do when you have some sort of um, idea in your mind about what it takes. Well, there's a lot of people out there who just think it's just the fact that it's either a woman or they're this or that. And I said, no, it's because you don't know how to write a script. You've never seen one. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crap. And I gotta be the first one to tell you. And you just you just don't know. You know, some people ain't ready for it. Ain't ready for it. I said, no, we ready for it. We looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Color Farm Media. Me and my partner, Ben Arnold, thought we should create a company, not only because I didn't know how to market my own ideas and get the scripts that I had written um, out, which I had written a horror thriller that we set up at Lionsgate. Um, uh, we're doing a movie about the Boy Squire of Harlem with Ava DuVernay's mm -hmm. producing partner, Paul Garns. Uh, Josh Whedon called me and I did a spinoff of the Watcher character for Buffy the Vampire Slayer about a black girl who's a vampire who's over 200 years old. Um, you know, that's just the stuff I had just waiting. And, um, but what about everyone else? You know, if, if it's so hard for me, imagine how hard it is for everyone else. And I met one of your friends who came in and I said, what are you looking for? What do you think's missing? And she said, access, mm -hmm. access. Well, that's what we try to make, more accessible. We call ourselves at Color Farm Media, the Motown of film, television, and tech. Submitted some yes. myself. And $25,000 in matching funds oh, for wow. a few of them, too. Yeah. Okay, that's great. And um, if you would like to give any advice to someone who wants to step into the entertainment or the acting world, what would that advice be? Um, you need to haul ass. And things take a lot longer than you think. Right. Um, a lot of people worry about where they are, should they be here. They put a lot on it. But I think if you want to be an architect, you know where you go to school and you study those courses right. and you move it on and you don't keep talking about it. But there's something about being an artist that is a little loosey-goosey, but it's actually one of the hardest things that you can be. It is. You're an entrepreneur, you're your own marketing, your own brand, you have to build networks, you, have, you live by your reputation. Often you feed two or three people in your network that depend on you, whether it's your rep representation or people who work for you. And you need to be mindful that this is a business, but it's surrounded by the art of culture making. And that is a skill set. Yeah. And just because you watch television doesn't mean you know how to make it. There's a template and there's a structure underneath there that exists. And if you pull away everything that dazzles you, right. you'll see that there's real craft. Yes. And you should get to learning it. You should read more. Right. Um, and you should uh, learn uh, by doing not by uh, thinking that just because you roll it in with a camera and somebody's talking, right. that that's inherently um, interesting. It certainly uh, may be interesting to you, but not to anybody else. Right. Narrative is much more difficult, and we need to make sure that we're coming with it. Just like um, if you want to be the best in basketball, you practice your, you know, your layups and right. all that again and again. Well, same thing with um, being an artist or whatever level. Whatever. You practice over and over again, and then maybe you'll be good enough and then maybe you're great, and then suddenly maybe somebody will pay you. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, all right, well that's good information. And um, also, what really, I guess, inspired you to even want to start this, to say that this is a movement that you really want to do and put your time and effort your heart? So what really inspired you for that? Well, I was discovered in a basement theater called Freedom when I was 14 years old. And they came to town and they were looking for girls. And we all got a chance to audition because I was in the summer program, just by coincidence. And in the fifth week, a fifth, fifth week of a six week program, a movie came to town. And um, because I showed up, I was there 5.30 in the morning, I was second in line, and we started passing um, us around together, you know, like auditioning with each other. And somewhere during the middle of the day, they gave me the full script and said, look at this part. And at the time, I didn't know it was the, you know, the lead role, but it was, and I ended up getting the lead role after several auditions and several screen tests. That was me. And there were some of the girls that got into that movie too. But there was so much more talent in that building and in Philadelphia that never got a shot because film and television is inherently biased and prejudiced and doesn't select for more. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I always promised myself that not only would I uh, need to build the skill sets of writing and creation so I could create more opportunity, that I would try to reach out and create a bridge, seen, and maybe had an opportunity. And I always remembered how guilty I, I felt getting that role and knowing how much they wanted it. And for them, I was some person who just walked in the other day and got a role, and many of those people had been in that acting school for years. Mm. And um, I thought to myself, if I ever did get a chance, mm. I would show the world what type of um, and, um, talent was there. I wasn't gonna get that chance for a very long time, because not only was I young, was that I was young, but I didn't have, I couldn't create. I didn't know how to write. I didn't know I was a tool in the toolbox at the time. Um, I knew I had ideas even at 17 and 18, but going on the Cosby show, I saw for the first time a writer's room. I, I really had never contemplated how these things got made and what went into it. So I started to write, and I wasn't very good at it. I didn't have any discipline. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know about structure, but I tried, and I was really sort of, you know, do 10 pages and then leave it for four months and come back and not know where I was. <laughs> and then say, no, oh, it's good, it's good. Look at those first two, you know, oh man. And just, it was horrible because I had stacks and stacks and five, you know, boxes of stuff. I ended up marrying a writer at some point and uh, he really said, you gotta sit your butt in that chair and sit down. It's a solitary effort and it hurts and it's not fun sometimes, but that's the gig. And um, eventually I got to it. And people started knowing me more from writing. And uh, people asked me all the time, well, why don't we see you? And I said, well, you know, you don't see me because there are not enough roles. Mm -hmm. And when I was first starting, there were very few roles for ingenues. And ingenues meaning if you're young. And I wasn't even considered an ingenue. I asked my, my agent, um, I was telling her the types of roles that I would like to play. And uh, I guess, you know, I wasn't saying damsel in distress because I've always been kind of strong and tomboyish. But you know, I wanted to be, you know, I don't know the object of their desire or whatever. And she said, oh, Erica, no one would ever mistake you for an ingenue. Mm -hmm. And I was 19. Mm -hmm. That's my own rep, my own agent. And she was right. At the time, I don't even think Mia Long had emerged or Jada Pinkett or some of the people who would eventually become ingenues in so-called black films. You were either a foster child, which I played in my first movie, a slave, a hooker, all the things they did and talked about, Robert Townsend talked about, were true. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they were stereotypes, but you know they were true. And I would have to wait a long time before I became what would be the next step in a black woman's career, an authority figure, or the man be. It's like, well, you better get up here in my office, I'm tell you. <laughs> I said, what you gonna say? I don't know, you know, all that. <laughs> and I don't know if I was black enough in this sort of stereotypical way that even black people started to create um, around us, and it's sort of, you, you must be crazy, you know, all this stuff, and you come on here, you must be, all, I just talked, and I was gonna get those roles, you know, not offhand, they would thank me for them. And so there were things that, you know, that I think were in the air, in the 80s and 90s, around what it is to be black, what it is to be urban suddenly, what it is to be gangster, that kept a lot of people out of, I think, what would be the natural progression of just good film. Mm -hmm. And I think if you were a good filmmaker, you weren't really going to find much space. I'm, I'm, I'm just being truthful to how I thought. You had to write in a very stereotypical way, very male way. Um, if you weren't a rapper, it's very difficult to get noticed, all that stuff. But I just kept writing. And uh, the will turns. And guess what? The will did turn street to the mainstream to provide more of the faces and the voices that I saw. So, Color Farm Media is that. We call ourselves the film, the Motown of film, television, and tech. And if we hadn't had Barry Gordy and many of the impresarios that came and producers that came and created hip hop um, and found all those amazing people from Stevie Wonder to Marvin Gaye, where would they, we would have, what kind of world would we live in without those voices? Well, we're living without those voices right now because film and television, as you know, is uniquely collaborative and there's a different standard. And most people don't know how high up is. So we thought if we went around and gave people education and said, listen, we know you have something you want to make, so we'll help you make it. But let's make sure that you're in the best shape to be successful. And what does it do for us? It gives us credibility. 
it gets us to know who our community and that we're in the world too, and we hope that you support us because we're supporting you. Also, it helps to, sh to prove to them that not only are you out there, is that you're mighty, that you're the new majority, and they should be talking to you. They shouldn't be afraid of you. They should be excited to see you. But if they ignore you, they, then there's hell to pay because you guys are the future, and that's just it. So that's what we call Keep It Colorful. Keep It Colorful is this initiative that we started that we just said, let's go. And I uh, piggybacked it on some of the things that I was doing, whether it was an independent film or speaking engagement, and we just hit the road. And we went to Cleveland and Detroit and um, Compton. Compton was just a few days ago, last week, and 600 people showed up. And Stevie Wonder got us on his station and let us advertise on Steve Harvey's show and uh, Aja, Mayor Aja Brown. Uh, made sure we had use of the facility and 600 people came and you know just like here in North Carolina you know they answered the call because they knew Seed and Spark and I'll talk about Seed and Spark in a second but um, we aligned ourselves with a crowdfunding platform called Seed and Spark and Seed and Spark is a place where they're the most successful crowdfunding platform in the world mm -hmm. and it's run by this young woman named Emily Best and Emily Best I'm not the best little girl in the class she is and um, <laughs> She's been doing this for a while. She's an amazing young woman. She really wanted to make sure that inclusion and diversity was, was um, like very much a part of what she does. And, and um, she backs it by partnering with other people. And uh, that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it's necessary. And it's because somebody found me. So I hope to find them. That's beautiful, and I really do appreciate you with this interview and this time that you've given me. Also, I would like to say that this has been, you don't even understand how much this has given me um, life. <laughs> Thank you. Because I call myself Maxine Shaw oh, all the time. I started oh, to do law school. I know, right. <laughs> but um, this is just great. I've met someone that is just very, that I look up to. I look Thank like you. a lot of Thank people you. tell you don't understand Thank a lot you. of people tell me that it's all beautiful. the time. It's beautiful. It's a compliment it. to me. Oh, your big so beautiful. beautiful eyes and your gorgeous Yours skin too. and all that. Beautiful. I mean, you know, and you actually have I actually pretty just hair and all that. Yeah, yeah I was uh, I was faking the funk. But yeah, I found that is, out last year. Nice. I was a little upset, I won't lie. Yeah, it's all right. You know, like, they so don't good. understand I'm an actress, you know, right. but now they do. I used to have people come, young man, where's your locks, girl? And I'm like, it's a costume. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. But thank you. And can you send us off on Trail Talk TV? Send us off? Yep, a drop. Oh, hi, this is Trill Talk TV. And I'm with you here in Raleigh. Thank you. The key. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> but I get it. And it's been nice because I've been able to, to come out. And, and, and because of people know me from Cousin Pam and Max and all that, it's nice to put out a, a call. <laughs> <laughs> all people for. But the truth is that you were you were you were listening to that call anyway. You're probably already inside of all sorts of interesting groups. And if you're not, this is what we've been finding out too. And I think uh... you are now tuning into a very exclusive interview brought to you by Tea Time with Key Productions.